Okay, today we will conclude chapter 7. Huh? Then next class we start chapter 8. Our last chapter next week. Uh, not a lot. Lah. It's just, uh, uh, I think, two or three more equations. Still the same, like impulse and all this. Yeah, same concept. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, chapter seven. Um, we deal with work and energy. So again, work is force and distance. Energy is uh, you have kinetic energy so far. All right, kinetic half mv square, but here you deal with uh, angular velocity. Angular velocity. Okay, let's look at uh, uh, one of the civil question. All right, so you have a vehicle that lift off a, a pipe, and this pipe was a seven hundred kilogram. Uh, suspend on two kinds of forklift. Undergo a swinging motion. So it's like you are you are lifting this uh, pipe and then uh, maybe certain movement, the pipe will, will shake like that. Okay, will shake. Yes. Okay. Determine the normal and frictional force acting on each kind. Kind is the two, what call two arm of a forklift. Right, the two forklift. Right. Okay, need support. You need to find the force, the friction force that you need to support here. Um, at the instant theta equal to zero means at the stable loca location. Measurement of the pipe and suspender was shown in the figure. You ignore the mass of suspender and thickness. Okay, so you have a center of mass at this here, O at here. So again, when you see G and O. Normally, you need IO equal to IG plus MD square. Okay, IG from table. Okay, uh, then there's one equation with this uh, moment equal to IG uh, alpha. Right, there's one more here, right? So you are given all these parameters. And although this question was not mentioned anything about uh, energy or work, but in chapter seven, uh, if the question want you to use work and energy equation, the question will mention very specifically. For example, uh, based on the understanding in uh, work and energy or principle of work and energy, find what? Okay. So in this case, you need to use the energy and work equation. Kinetic plus work done equal to kinetic number two. Then you start to applying the equation. So before the pipe start, there's no movement, so kinetic zero. And in your answer for coming test two or final exam, please write T1 equals zero. If the question say you start from rest, then write this one out. Don't suddenly you give zero and then you mix this mark. I'll only look for answers. So if you don't write, then you know don't have mark. Okay. So this is a free mark. Huh? You usually start from rest. Remember to write what is the status. In this case, kinetic one zero. Okay. So there are two ways. Huh? There are two ways of calculating your energy. One is either from the central mass or from the origin point O. There are two ways. Ah. So I'm showing one of the uh, way. So if you refer to table, your IG equal to MR square. If you refer to table, so your kinetic number two, kinetic number two will have half MV square. Your V referring to center of mass and another half IG W square. This is another uh, effect that under uh, rotation. So under rigid body, 
you need to add one more, which is I omega square. This one. So you substitute the value, or the value you don't have omega, you need to find the omega. So remember to change your V link with angular parameter. V equal to omega R. So here you have omega R here. And you need to solve quadratic equation. In this case, uh, your omega, uh, your omega, omega is square. So you need to do the square root. So your T2 equal to something omega square. After you're done with energy, then you start to do look at the work. So okay, the first the first one is from the center of mass. Huh? The second one, I show you if the point considered from zero. Just now, the just now, this set of answer is from center of gravity G here. There, there's uh, one set. Another set of uh, solution you calculate from another point O. It depends on uh, which one you're more comfortable. Huh? You still get the same equation. So I'll show you the second method. We start from O. So O, if you start from O, T2 equal to IO omega square 2, still the same, but now you're referring to point O. So point O, what is IO? IO equal to um, M D square plus this is uh, M plus R square. Okay, so why why you have these two? Because you have uh, two obje uh, two object here. One is ring. One is the uh, the distance here. Okay, one is from the G. One is from this here. This one, huh? So the equation you need to be careful on how you find. So you still get the same uh, answer for T two. Then you start to look at work. If you do work, you draw free body diagram. Free body diagram, uh, and, and I need to highlight, yeah, when you draw free body diagram, in rigid body, when you're given point G, make sure you draw your W through center of mass. If you draw a bit off, this is wrong. Huh? OK, so you draw free body diagram, all the mass will go through center of mass, which is uh, at G point. And then this one was is like a pin. At the two both hand of your fork, fork leaf, the point all here will be like a pin. So pin, you have two forces. Okay, So you have uh, forces this direction and forces this direction. Okay, so NT is the contact, and then there is a, you can say as a friction force that stop this uh, board, this object from sliding. Okay. Then there's a tri uh, rectangular that you can calculate from trigonometry. Right, you break the diagram here. Point four is a, point four is a length of here, and then you know the distance here with the radius zero point one five. So you have a one triangular here, so you can find the distance over here with the angle. Huh? Okay, so you find whatever it is. You can find the y here based on the mathematics model. Right? Once you find the delta y, you put into the equation. So once you find the the work, uh, the work done, multiplied by the distance traveled, will be, recent traveled is over here. Means it's swing, but this is the distance traveled by the force, uh, by the work, right? Then at the end, you'll find the omega two. Okay, so the next one, you draw free body diagram. So again, you have contact surface, at the arm and there's a friction force here because the question asks you normal force and friction force. So there's a friction force here. Uh, then on the left is pre-body diagram, on the right is kinematic diagram. For chapter six, chapter seven, chapter eight, your kinetic diagram or kinematic diagram will be 
focusing on aceration and mass combined together become force. So kinetic diagram, you 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 will not see acceleration, but you will see forces as a product of mass times uh, acceleration. So in this case, you see uh, your A have two direction. Huh? Because why? This object was swing in the circular motion. So circular motion, you have normal and tangent. Normal always pointing to the center. Tangent always follow the motion direction. Okay, this is a curvature motion. Huh? Then you when you have a rotating body, you have one more moment, which is Ig alpha. This is a bit special compared to the particles. Huh? So when you have rigid body, you have one more moment, Ig alpha. So you use the three equation here, F equal to ma, you break into two, F equal to ma. If the object move in the rectangular or the rectilinear motion, you only have x and y. If the object swing in a collinear motion, then you have normal and tangent. Same, you have one more equation which calculate the motion, uh, the, the moment. In this case, we calculate the moment at O. So moment at O on the left-hand equation will be, will be uh, referring to the free body diagram. The right-hand side will referring to the kinet kinetic diagram. Okay, the rest you substitute. Okay, here, if you focus on O, there's no moment happen. Huh? If you focus on O, you close O. Here, go down along the radius, you don't have the D. D is zero. Okay, moment is F times D. There's no perpendicular distance here. Okay, that's why zero. Then here, alpha, you need to calculate what is your IO. For this object, so I O is two two side of uh, calculation times the alpha. How to find the I O? There is a previous slide show you how to find I O, right? So at the end, you will find the answer. Okay. The detail I won't go deep. You just read the slides. The last section of uh, chapter seven is conservation of energy. When you see the word conservation means all the energy before equal to after. So you conserve the energy. You will use a uh, still go back to your understanding in the datum. For potential energy, the one that above datum positive, the one that below datum is negative. This is uh, need to be careful, uh, potential energy. Um, especially when the object bounce up or bounce down. Okay, so still same. This one uh, you already know already. Um, okay, potential energy is mgh. Mgh with its w h or wy. So your datum again, uh, object above datum positive, uh, below datum is negative. You are dealing with vector. Uh, you're dealing vector. Your mg is a vector. Y is the displacement, also vector. Huh? So if your weight go down, if your weight go down from the, uh, this is negative. If W go down is negative because we always uh, assume go up is positive. But your Y on top is uh, positive. So your weight, Above this one will get um, okay, this one you refer to datum. Huh? This one refer to datum. Again, recall potential energy for spring. You'll be seeing spring in your I, I forget whether in your test two or final exam. Right? You'll see, see spring. Spring energy half k square. Right. And conservation of energy, conservation of energy, you need to consider the gravitational and elastic forces together. Right. So this will be the complete principle of all the energy for rigid body. You will have kinetic potential. 
uh, non-conservative uh, work and kinetic after the motion. So this is a complete equation for rigid body. Okay. Uh, so what is non-conservation is, like, for example, friction. Uh, friction will do energy. So, yeah, so normally if you apply the conservation of energy, you'll get uh, potential plus kinetic equal to before uh, equal to before and after. So you need to look carefully the question. Sometimes it asks you to uh, solve only conservation system. Then you, you can use this one. Huh? Okay. So for example, if there's a friction, drag force, then all these are non-conservative. Means you, you will see the question, assume, assume there's no drag, assume there's no friction. Then actually give you a hint, you need to use conservation of energy. Okay, so let's look at example five. Okay, example five, you have a complex system, you have a spring system, you have a rod, you have a two object A and B. And then you have a point G, you have an angle. Okay, so you are given a mass of rod AB, confined at both ends, one is horizontal, one vertical. Spring have stiffness, so you're given the spring stiffness, and unstretch when theta zero. So unstretch means when this one was horizontal. Okay. Determine the angular velocity of AB with this one angular velocity when theta equals zero if the rod released from rest when theta equal to 30 degree. What does it mean? It means you pull this spring up to 30 degree, then you let go. You let go until this this uh this object will swing anticlockwise. Will swing anticlockwise, so your omega will swing this way. Omega alpha will swing this way. Okay. Ignore the slider blocks. So how do you find the angular velocity omega when it's zero? So in this case, um, beside you using all the f equal to m a. Uh, the moment you still cannot solve, so you you can try conservation of energy in this question. Uh, basically, when you see spring, most of the time you use conservation of energy or energy equation. Okay, right. Um, so when you have free body diagram, you always start with the center of mass. Draw a W from center of mass, right? Then there's a datum. I give myself a datum here, A. Then there's a distance traveled from this datum when you pull 30 degree. So this one, the length is 0.4. Sorry, this one 0 0.4. 0 0.4 sine this data equal to this length. But there's a triangular here. So you have this length, you have this data. So this height here is sine theta. Right, point four sine theta. Then your y, the y one is uh yeah y one is uh point four y. Okay, so this one. Okay. So this is unstretched. Uh, so th this is uh when you when you pull and then you let go. So this one will go up until this this position. Then you find what is the angular velocity at this position. Okay. Um, so before, when you load the spring, the G is below datum. Okay. So below datum, your potential energy is negative. Below datum is negative, potential energy. Um, and you have a positive energy stored in the spring. 
So this is before. After, so your before you, 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 when you pull the spring 30 degree, your energy have two. Uh, one is negative, one is positive. Negative is because of potential uh, location below datum. Positive for spring because you charge the spring. You substitute, you get your energy uh, before in the beginning. Then when you add position two means you, you, you let go the spring, the spring will go up, then zero degree. You want to find the omega here. So potential energy zero because it's already reached the datum. Okay. So also when you reach this one, the, the spring will also unstretch at this location, so zero. So there's no energy when it reach zero degree. Then you use uh, kinetic energy. Uh, kinetic energy half mv square, you need the v. And this one was rotating, so you need angular parameter to find the v. v equal to omega r. So, but you, in this case, uh, you know that it starts from rest, so zero. T1 also zero. Right? At position number two, your kinetic have two. One is the mv square. One is Ig omega square. You substitute the value, you get T2. Okay. Um, and then the kinetic diagram, you can use IC point. So if you use AB, uh, IC point, um, So you draw the IC point if you want uh, for point A. So VG at the center of uh, gravity or center of mass there, your v, VG is moving up in this direction because this is the road is rotating in the circular motion. So tangent velocity always tangent to the curves, right? Tangent go up. So this is the R that you want. So your VG2 equal to Omega R, Omega 2 R. So then you put in your equation in the conservation of energy. You put in there, there will be something missing. In this case, Omega, then you solve for Omega. Okay, all right. The steps always you group the situation one by one and then you reassemble them. So it's one of the things. One more example with this example six. Uh, I think this is the last one. Okay, so you have uh, this here with the rod uh, with a, a rod 6.6 .6 meter, and this rod uh, able to rotate. When this one rotate, this uh, B will able to move up and move down depending on the rotation of this. The mass of this was given. Uniform five kilogram rod was given. AB was given. If Assembly release from rest when theta equal to 60 degrees. So theta is 60. You release from rest when theta is 60. So when you release, you know that this one will move to the left. Will sure move to the left, right? So move to the left, lift this one rotate clockwise. This one rotate clockwise, this one also become vertical like that. So this one will rotate clockwise also. Ah. So First thing, when you draw your free body diagram or kinetic diagram, focus on the point, especially the central of mass G, and then try to observe the, the rotation motion. Okay, you need to find angular velocity of the rod when it's become horizontal. Azum it's the same example as the example number five, still the same. So observe the, the steps. First, you look for potential energy. Because we are use, you are going to use conservation of energy in this case, um, so you can split the diagram in motion. So diagram one, diagram two is position before, position after. Okay, before and after. So before you have all the forces for the uh, AB arm here, the weight go through the center of gravity. Datum also go through the center of mass of A here, W. Okay. Um, in this case, if friction was not mentioned, means it's assume everything 
there's no friction at the rod here. Uh, if you don't see anything mentioned friction, assume smooth surface. Then when it become zero degree or horizontal, then still you looking at the two uh, weight of each body. And you see there's a there's a traveling distance for your center of gravity from here until here. You can calculate by using trigonometry equation. So here you have 0.6. G always half of the distance. And then you have an angle here. So you're able to find the height of this total and then where is the center height here. In this case, you use 0.3 sine 60. Okay, you find the you, you have the diagram before and after. So potential energy, you refer to um, the datum, horizontal datum here. So G before it start having positive potential energy because it's above datum. Okay, before after is zero. Because it's returned to datum. Okay. You put in all the parameter. Okay, MGH before you get a positive energy, right? Position two, you know that it returned to datum zero, so zero joule, huh? zero energy. Kinetic energy, so kinetic energy, you transform to the N, the last, because before it's zero, you, you start from rest, it, everything is zero there. So what you're interested in is the second position, which is horizontal. In this case, I use the IC method, so I, I fix point A as my IC. Then I know that this rod was rotated circular motion or collinear motion. So that I know that my velocity at my center of gravity always tangent to the curve. So that's why my, my velocity, can, I can draw a point down. Okay, rotate, rotate like this. So your velocity tangent direction. Then this is the R, R, I, R G to IC. Omega here is zero and then you have omega here okay so um you put in all the equation right you draw the kinetic diagram so again you you use you link the velocity of gravity with the angular parameter v equal to omega r the omega of this rock huh? of this rock put in there then you calculate the kinetic energy after. You have half mv shear. You have the second moment of inertia that create also energy. Then the mv square for the second one, the, for the disc, and also for the disc. Okay. The front two is for the rod. The, the, the next two, these two is for the disc. So you have two objects. Eh? So each object will give you two set of equations. The rest is a substitution. Once you substitute, you, you will find there's one parameter missing there. Okay, you substitute in the conservation of energy equation, you will have omega. Okay, yeah. okay. Sometimes you're given omega, you just convert omega back to velocity. Sometimes the question asks you velocity at center of gravity G when you reach a certain angle. Right. So uh, when you do revision, you try to re-engineer the question and then try to think, ask yourself, what if I have, I have this situation? Right. How can I solve it? Okay. And you, you can show that actually the question won't come out exactly the same as the question that we discussed in, in the lecture. Right. Uh, but we will modify based on what you learn. Okay. Okay, there's a note here. Huh? So kinetic, again, kinetic, you can find kinetic energy is half IC or I omega square. Huh? This is a, a bit special for rigid body. Okay, so with this, we conclude chapter seven. Next lecture, we start chapter eight, which is the last chapter. Okay. Right. Huh? Yes. Hmm. Yes, the particle and rigid body. Actually, it's the same. 